Really, have you been filled? Have you let your soul delight itself in the fatness? And have you tasted and seen that the Lord is good this week? I ask you, has your spirit been satisfied? And have you been made glad this week? Has your confidence been increased? And do you have more assurance of faith than you did when we, when we first got here this week? Is your hope for heaven burning brighter? I know mine is. Have you, brethren, been encouraged to lay hold on eternal life and press towards the mark and run the race set before you with patience? The fact that any of these things are able to be experienced by us is due to the fact that the gospel has been preached here this week. The reception of the true gospel, the good news of what God has accomplished on our behalf in Christ causes these things to happen. As we begin the session this afternoon, I wanted us to start by considering, um, by thinking about the effects that we are able to see among us of this gospel being declared. Why do we spend so much time discussing it and what really is, be is the benefit gained in doing so? First of all, wherever this message has actually been preached, it's accompanied by power. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Rome, in Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. He also wrote to the Thessalon Thessalonians, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. And in his epistle to the Corinthians, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The truth of which the gospel testifies is transforming. It's renewing and it's ultimately satisfying. It communicates to us the provision of God which provides for us what we never could have had by our own power. And it testifies to us of the one who is our Lord, who is our savior and our king, our high priest, our intercessor on high, and what he has accomplished on our behalf, brethren. As we familiar, familiar ourselves with this good news, it enables us to enter into an involvement within, in the purpose of God into which we have been called according to. First, it reveals to us the means by which we can be associated with the atonement that was made on, in our behalf. It's this message that makes the fact that Jesus has been made the propitiation for the sins of the world good news to us because our belief of it is what connects us to that covering. As we put our faith in what is declared concerning the death of Christ, the cleansing is made available to us. Now that being said, I wanna exhort you brethren to always remember that in Christ, our sins have been paid for. Don't let the devil trick you to living as if you were a debtor to the flesh any longer, to live after the flesh. And don't ever forget that you have been freed from the guilt and power of sin. Amen. Secondly, it shows us a better and more enduring substance that's available for us to obtain. It testifies to us of a throne of grace to which we have access to find help in time of need. And it speaks of heavenly places in Christ Jesus where, that we can resort to for safety. <clears throat> It speaks of treasure in heaven that can be laid up for us. So I wanna exhort you brethren, don't ever forget that the same God who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light is leading you in that light. That Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith and that you were raised to walk in newness of life. You were raised in, into newness of life to walk in it. And that is the very thing that Jesus is reigning at the right hand of God to empower you to do. Amen. It also testifies to us of a good hope in heaven, to, in heaven to come. It speaks of eternal life, life and life more abundantly. Amen. This life that we have in Jesus, brethren, is of a different order. It will never pass away. It will never fade. It will never become old and it will never lose strength. So I want to exhort you to live in eager expectation of the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Your salvation, brethren, is nearer than when you first believed. Hold the beginning of your confidence steadfast unto the end, knowing that the crown of life awaits those who have finished their course. 
As we by faith believe and walk according to what this gospel testifies to us, we have confidence, we have a full assurance of faith, a joy and rejoicing in the present time, and an expectant, hopeful outlook on the future beyond this world. So I ask you again, have you experienced an increase in these areas this week? Have you been benefited by the exposition of these good and precious things that have been spoken of? May we continue to seek after a greater grasp of these things, that we may continue steadfast until the end, when the church will be presented as the spotless holy bride without spot or wrinkle unto the glory of God.